Hello, it's Summon Professor Dorn here with another battle report. This time it's going to be Imperial Feast versus the Death Corpse of Krieg. There's some custom rules that I made myself for narrative and just fun purposes because I'm not going to be doing anything competitive. And a lot of the rules that I came up with to Space Marine players seem overpowered. Even though it's mostly just for infantry and uh, Death Riders. So I'll be showing some of the rules or the extra things that I added for the Death Corps, like relics, warlord traits, and um, a new army trait where every time a model is uh, killed, roll a d6 and on a 4 plus they can shoot or fight once, as if it was a shooting or fight phase, and a character it's a 3 plus. And it works for vehicles too, but it uses the top of their bracket to fire their one weapon once. And that's it. I hope you enjoy the battle report, which will start as soon as I'm finished here. Enjoy. I'll let it roll because I'm just having fun today. Today is going to be an open war mission, if you couldn't tell from the cards in the background. We haven't decided what cards to use yet, or what the mission, deployment, or anything else is going to be, because we're also going to have a twist. And because the Imperial Fist are actually behind on points, they're going to be the ones getting the ruse. You'll understand why in a second. <clears throat> So today we're going to start with the Imperial Feast. As you can tell, we have 12 command points. This is going to be a battalion of 1,502 points, or 77 power, if you're going to run that. We have a captain who's going to be the warlord, who has the warlord trait of Architect of War, which means all units, infantry units that have the core, which means just those three, are going to be able to gain uh, any incoming AP rounds of one will be lowered to zero. And the relic is going to be Artificer Armor, which means he has a two plus save. All right. So these are going to be the two main warlords we're going to have for today, a captain and a tech priest because of all the vehicles that we have in the back lines. Next up for infantry, we have a standard Parimedis Marine Squad over here. Standard bolters. Bolt rifles. Auto bolter rights here. You can tell from the different knee pad colors. These are assault bolter boys. And then a standard tactical squad with a flamer and a plasma pistol. Alright, now we go to fast attack. Which is a bike squad with a captain who I nicknamed Mr. T who has a plasma pistol and chain sword. Next up on the list of people, we're gonna have a scout squad of four snipers. This one with the brown hair is gonna be the sergeant. And the one with the rocket launcher is just the heavy weapons expert of the team. On the other thing, we have an apothecary. Next up, we have three veterans. Two of them have hammers, one of them has a power fist, then the sergeant, the commanding officer, is going to be the one with the shield, which I think might be a bad decision in my part, so I'm just going to do this on camera and just go... Eh. There we go. Sergeant there. Crisis averted. Woo! Alright, next up we have a Vindicator. Brand new. Thank you, Christmas, and someone special to me. Has a storm bolter on it. Next up, we have two predators, exactly the same loadout: auto predator, auto cannon on the top, two las cannons, and a storm bolter. And for transports, on this side we have a rhino, which is most likely just going to be empty and just there to fill up points. And a drop pod. We might need that for later, especially with those hammers. You'll understand why in a second. And that has been the Imperial Fist side. Now, we're going to go and see why I have a lot of anti-tank. And why I'm kind of hesitant to say they might maybe win. Because we're going to see who they're fighting against after this. Yep, this is clearly all that they're going to be going up against, which is the Death Corpse of Krieg. My favorite little boyos with the... Uh, um, Scions. Yes, those are Scions now. Yay. 
Anyway, for some reason, this whole entire list ate up two command points, so they're down to ten. And, um, yeah. So the Warlord trait, I came up with my own um, codex supplement for the Death Corps of Krieg, which I'll be posting later on uh, either Twitter, Discord, or wherever else I'm going to be putting all this stuff. Most likely it's going to go on my Twitter. I'll link it in the bottom below. So if you want to follow me, go ahead. I just do art and other stuff as well. Go ahead and feel free to pause and read what I have in place. Some of this is just for me, specifically just for me, so I can just have fun with people and just have fun with the army in general because the rules that GW has for us is not fun. Oh yeah, and there's a Bane Blade here. Yeah. Eh, that doesn't matter though, it's just a Bane Blade. <laughs> anyway, let's go through the Warlord traits. So the Warlord trait I'm gonna go with is Martyr's Defiance, which is a special thing from the supplement I came up with, which allows any unit that has died recently or is going to die, because the army trait for Death Corps of Krieg is if you roll a d6 on a four plus, the unit is able to shoot one more time as if it was a shooting phase. Only if it's a character or whatever, but I changed it so that way it's for the whole army, so it's actually useful. But for Martyr's Defiance, any unit within six inches that dies on a d6 roll of six plus, they stay alive with one wound remaining. Yes. And the relic is going to be Auto Recular Servitor, which all units within six inches we roll hit rolls of one. All right, so let's go through the army list we have here today. We have a tank commander. I have a unit missing, which is a tech priest. So that's fun. Next up for troops, Scion Squad. Uh, with the plasma pistol chainsword commander, the rest of the three guys have uh, just standard <laughs> hell guns. Next up, we have another Scion Squad. <clears throat> I'm gonna throw up in my mouth from saying that. Uh, the sergeant with chainsword, blast pistol, hot shot, las pistol, <sighs> and a grenade launcher. Next up for the heavies, we have three standard infantry heavy weapons teams. It's like they're trying to kill the Death Corps of Krieg off one by one. And then finally, three Lehman Russ tanks in the back. Sorry. Plasma missing the bolters because these two ate up all the bolters that I have, so I need to get another Lehman Russ tank sometime soon in the future so I can get more bolter pieces because all the bolters and all the weapons are detachable. This one has a hunter killer missile. And then two command points for an auxiliary uh, detachment, because this is patrol. We have this big boy with a cute little Death Corps of Creek commander sticking his head out of the top. Adorable. And that is this list. This one is 1,504 points, as opposed to the Imperial Fist, 1,502 points. Point-wise, the Imperial Fist are behind. Power as well, actually. So they'll be able to get the ruse. I'll be right back after I find out and set up the cards. All right, so all of these have been shuffled. I did it before I set up anything even the table. So here we go. One, two, three. Deployment's gonna be like this. One, 
two, three, four. Kingslayer. Each player adds up the power rating of each enemy unit that are destroyed during the battle, doubling their total score at the end of the battle if one of the models slain is the enemy warlord. At the end of the fifth battle round, the player with the highest total wins the battle, even if the army has been wiped out. Nice. Next up, the twist for these guys. For the whole entire table, actually. One, two, three, four, five. Each player may pick a friendly unit at the start of their turn that regains D3 lost wounds. Oh. Okay. And finally, the ruse for the Imperial Fist, which is just going to be one. Play this card after the deployment is complete, but before the first battle round. As long as your Warlord is on the table, your units automatically pass for Ralph. Ooh! For Imperial Fists and Space Marines now, that's pretty good, because... And they shall know no fear only affects after morale is done. You're, if you fail morale... You actually lose a marine. All that and they shall know no fear does now is ignore penalties when it comes to attrition test. So it doesn't add one or minus one to attrition test. It just stays the same. So that's fun. Anyway, be right back after deployment is done because I have to move a lot of dice around and stuff and cards and all that so also if we're at a tie by the end of game turn five we get sudden death I know that's not how you're supposed to do it but that is how I want to do it and since I'm playing against myself I'm gonna do it that way so haha -ha. plus it feels better that way especially if there's a tie all right, see you after deployment is finished. Oh yeah, you can see the supplement I made. I'll explain some rules as they come through, especially some stratagems that we can play as the Death Corps, which is pretty nice. Very expensive, considering how powerful they are. So yeah, here we go. All right, so deployment is finally finished. Let's start with the Death Corps of Krieg, since that is to my left. So we have the one with the Hunter Killer Missile. Bane Blade. Warlord. Tech Priest. Three last cannons. Those two. And then those two squads right there of Scions are going to be in Deep Strike. Deep Strike. With the Veterans and the Warlord. These guys are in the Rhino, flanking the side, together with this guy. Infantry squad up here in the building with the Apothecary. Vindicator, Rhino. Scott squad, and then the uh, Assault Bolters boys. All right, so both teams have finally been set up. And now we're going to roll to see who goes first. Starting with, starting with yellow for Imperial Fist and black for Death Corps of Krieg. They get a five. They get a four. Imperial Fist, turn one. I'll see you after the movement phase is finished. All right, so the Death Corps of Krieg are already going to spend two command points for Artillery Barrage. It's another one of the custom stratagems that I have for the uh, supplement down to eight command points before the game starts and we're going to choose a point that's going to be let's go there select the point on the table all units within d6 plus six inches of that point for each model that's in that marker has that has the keyword infantry they suffer one mortal wound on a d6 roll of five plus but if it's a character or vehicle, they suffer two mortal wounds on a d6 roll of six plus. Roll two d6 if it's vehicles. So, six inches. 
Probably not going to get anything else in range. Yeah, just three extra inches, so nine inches of stuff. So, rolling two for that one. No. Next vehicle. The one in the back, the darker yellow. No. And then the character. No. All right, so that's two command points wasted for artillery barrage. All right. That should be it. Now we can go to the movement phase for Imperial Fist. Turn one. All right, here we are at the end of the movement phase. So the bikes went from the corner and went around, scooted up, scooted up, then dropped the drop pod down, because if I had put the drop pod down first, that thing would have been able to go around. Tech Priest is following this way to follow this one. Uh, Captain got out, and so did the veterans. The negator went over here. And then this one went and did like a little whoosh under the side right there. I didn't move the um, these guys yet. They're going to go this way. Yeah, that's it. That's the only thing that's going to move. Not the scouts are going to stay there. It's the guys underneath them that are going to go through the window to the street. Probably there. And then advance because they can. Um, shooting. I'll just... there. There we go. That's where they are. Alright, shooting, shooting, shooting. So, Storm Bolter, Storm Bolter, Storm Bolter, all of them are going to go into the last cannons back there. The last cannons here are going to go into this one, the, the auto cannon is going to go to that one, and the demolisher is going to go into him. Over here, all their bolters are going to go into this one. The plasma is going to overcharge, auto cannon, and last cannons. And then lastly, I'm going to spend a command point on this guy for hellfire round. So he's going to fire one bolt pistol shot into this guy. And if it hits, I do D3 mortal wounds. And he's just going to be there. They're going to try and shoot at him as well. I think it might be a waste of ammunition because it's just bullets. But you never know. So I'll see you at the end of the shooting phase to show you the carnage. Also, the veterans aren't going to really do anything. Probably going to fire a... No, they're not going to fire the bolt pistols. That's a waste of ammunition. That really is a waste. Oh well. We'll see you at the end of the shooting phase for Imperial Fist. Turn one. Okay, before I forget, I forgot about the scouts. I'm going to try not to do that again, so let's see what they can see. I see the Christmas tree. But that one could actually see the edge of the Bane Blade. So he's going to fire his missile launcher at the Bane Blade. Well, the snipers are going to try and make pot shots at the uh, enemy warlord over there. No. A little bit of this spot right here is actually the tech priest. So that one's going to shoot at the tech priest. Can't see it. And... Can't see it either, so... This is going to be the only one that's going to do a pot shot at the tech priest. The other three are going to go into the warlord. And this one's going to go into the big mama hubba over there. All right. Here we go. Shooting phase, turn one. All right, so I just wanted to come back to show this, but the rocket launcher. The rocket launcher. Wait. Uh, okay did six damage to the Bane Blade. That's all I wanted to do so far. So the Bane Blade has taken six damage. Okay, now I'll be back. Okay, wow, at the end of the shooting phase. Takes six wounds. Takes six wounds down to 20. Almost goes down. Spend a whole bunch of command points for Tank Hunter on this one. So for him, the auto cannon did Nothing. The last cannons, I rolled a one. So 
So it's two damage, right? Spend a command point. Down to eight. Roll another one. Not even the same dice. I picked up another one and rolled it. It went like, like that basically, but just like that. Sucked. Ugh. All right. That's the end of Imperial Fist turn one, I guess. Because I don't think anyone really wants to go into combat, especially the bikes, into this. Even though it's just two wounds. I'm contemplating if that would be a good idea. If this was timed, that would have been 20 minutes for the first turn. Just to move and shoot everything. Maybe 15 minutes, actually, in all honesty, considering how much time has actually passed. Including the time I'm now spending um, talking. So, you know what? Let's give it a go. We're gonna, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna charge. These bikes are gonna charge into this. All right, so. Gonna spend a command point for overwash, even though they're, it's hitting on sixes no matter what, so it's fine. So let's start with overwatch before we even charge. Because if I charge in and they all die anyways, it wouldn't really matter. So, starting with the battle cannon. Base a lot of shots. Thanks to grinding advance. Unless grinding advance doesn't work during the overwatch phase, which I would like to know. Because if it does, that'd be pretty sweet, considering that... Um... In the codex, it states that as long as the model doesn't move or moves half of its standard movement, it's allowed to get grinding advance, and because it didn't move, it allows it to get grinding advance. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. We'll see. Let me know in the comments below if that is a thing or not. Thank you. Anyway, hitting on sixes for the first set. Not a single one. All right, next three. Not a single one. All right. Heavy bolters now. One. All right, on a three. No. Um. I have a hunter killer missile on it. You know what? Sure, why not? Oh! <laughs> All right, if I spend a command point, if I'm not going to, but if I did, ah, oh, still wouldn't. Okay, good, 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 good. So, whoops. And yes, it is a hundred killer missile from an old set. I just haven't painted it. Just primed. All right. How many inches? Five. They need a five, so. They got a six, they're in. They're in. All right, I'll be right back after the combat phase is finished because that is a lot of paperwork I need to flip through and I don't want anyone just to sit here while I Try and find it. Oh, there they are. Never mind. I'll do it on camera anyways. Here we go. Sergeant. Three attacks. Plus one for being a space marine, plus another one for having a chainsword. The other two boys have... Uh, wait, that's only two attacks for the sergeant. That's dumb. That's really dumb. Plus one for being a space marine, plus one for... Uh, uh, chainsword. Let's start his chainsword. One for each of the standard biker boys. And then that many for just that. So starting with the two standard fists. Two hit. Wounding on sixes. 
Uh, both one off. All right, chainsaw time. Hitting all threes. Ooh. That's not a wound, so. All right, that's that. And then one fight for um, a little Neiman Russ tank. Doesn't hit. All right, that's the end of turn one for Imperial Fist. The only thing they were able to take out were the last cannons in the back and cause a few wounds all over the place, especially on that one. Sadly, they couldn't take it out this turn. In all honesty, I shouldn't have charged, but what's done is done. I'll live with it, whatever. Let's go into Imperial Guard, Death Corps of Krieg. Turn one. At the end of the movement phase, these ones landed here. These three kind of just scooted up to make room for the Bane Blade to just move. These ones landed here. And this one is getting out of combat. Because of a grenade launcher and some hotshot las guns and a special stratagem that they can pull if they're within range. Most likely all the bolters here are going to go into us, including this gun and the auto cannon, and then these two and the last cannons are going to go somewhere over there. Anyways, 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 here we go. Movement phase done. Bolters, veterans, cannon, that boy. Last cannon, that one. Battle cannon, that one. Bolters. If we can see them at the time, no, they're going to go up there. Bolter, up there. Plasma cannon, there. That, that one. This one, over there. No, here, right there. And that's going to be it for shooting? No. All the heavy bolters, including this gun and that gun, are going to go into that unit. This one's going to launch a crack grenade into them, and they're all going to shoot into that as well. All right, that's it for, the, for that. So once I'm done with the shooting phase, I'll show you the carnage after it is finished. Here we go for Death Corps of Krieg. Turn one shooting with a Bane Blade. After, before, before that, before that, before I forget. All right, so the Bane Blade is going to heal. No, that one is going to heal D3 wounds. It heals three wounds. This one is going to get healed D3 as well from the Tech Priest. It's only two. The highest this can go to is 26, so it's going to have a two there. And this one goes up to a five now. How special. And we're going to spend the command point, Jury Regan, to make it go all the way up to a six. All right, so the Death Corps of Krieg are down to seven command points still on turn one. Yikes. See you after the firing phase is over. All right, so at the end of the shooting phase for the Death Corps of Krieg, the officer put Strike and Shroud on him, which is nice. So now he's a big poopy cloud. Also, he did most of the back work that the Imperial Guard needed, except for when it came to the heavy bolters against those bikes. I rolled all of them, right? All right, okay. So you should get at least one, two, maybe three wound rolls because it's toughness five, strength five, AP one, damage two, you know, wiped out the bikes. That way the rest of this can just move and take out that one and then that one with these guys because that's down. This one exploded thanks to this boy. That one got horribly wounded thanks to this one's last cannons. These ones just picked at these ones. They just they picked at it. And when this thing exploded, that thing took three mortal wounds. That one took two. That one took two as well. This one took three. 
And honestly, I could not have done better until the freaking heavy bolters didn't do a single thing to those bikes. They're too maneuvery, that's why. And then I did um, Mass Volume of Fire, which is two command points, which after an infantry unit for the Imperial Guard, Death Corps of Krieg, keyword, uh, fire, on a D6 roll of two plus, they get to fire, again with las guns only. Anything that's a las gun, so hotshot las gun, hellfire rounds, whatever, as long as it's a las gun, they get to fire again on the two plus, and then a three plus, and then a four plus, then a 5+, plus, then a 6+, plus, mass volume of fire. And then I spent another command point for laser burn, which changes the range for the standard uh, hotshot las gun to 10 inches, and it changes it to assault 2. It's strength 4, AP negative 2, and damage 2. On wound rolls of 6+, plus, on modified ones, it changes the AP to minus 3. They fired, nothing happened, I'm like, all right. Grenade launched, crack, it did, didn't do anything. So I'm thinking, all right, all right, let's do it again. And I rolled a one. Anyway, we took down two there, so. That's something, yeah. So this thing is gonna be minus one to hit. I'm not gonna charge in the combat anywhere. Any vehicle that doesn't explode stays on the table as a ruined wreck. Like that. The top exploded off, went flying somewhere because of all the ammunition. That's the first time my hero of a tank is destroyed. My first Predator tank that helped me win another game against Raven Guard, if you remember that video. I don't have enough anti-tank. And the medic over there, Apothecary, isn't doing his job quite well as uh, I actually switched him out after I did the rolls because I'm mad at the apothecary. Hopefully medic does better. Hopefully medic does better. Anyways, now we're gonna go on to uh, Imperial Fist, turn two. Uh, did I not? Did I also mention that the Imperial Guard are down to four command points and? Imperial Fists are now up to nine. Yeah, so. I'll see you at the end of the movement phase for Imperial Fist. Turn two. All right, here we're at the end of the movement phase. The ones that are on the patio right there are now moving back, trying to get back inside. They stepped out of the building and quickly ran back after facing basically an onslaught of death right here. That just all combined to blow everything up right here. This thing exploded, killing one of their own and then they just retreated back in the building, as Imperial Fist normally do. I mean, tactical withdrawal. <clears throat> My bad. These ones got out of the Rhino, moved. So they got the Flamer right here, about to demolish these guys right there. The bikes no longer being in combat, thanks to this thing moving out, went this way. They're gonna shoot all their stuff into here, and this one's gonna overcharge into this. And then as you can tell, there's a guy hidden away inside the building right there in the shadows. Ooh, spooky. He went through the window. He's gonna try and charge into this thing. Bap it a few times, because he's the sergeant. The warlord is right there. I'm gonna spend a command point on him for a hellfire round again to fire into this thing. And then spend another two command points for tank hunters on this thing to try and take this out. So all this is gonna go away, hopefully. <sighs> Missile launcher is going to try and fire into this thing since it only has three wounds left. All the snipers are going to try and go into this this guy again. If we can see him, probably not because he's hiding behind the tank. Yeah, I probably can't see him anymore. <laughs> so we're going to fire into this thing, hopefully getting... Um, Wound rolls a six for mortal wounds. All the guys up there are gonna fire into this. Storm Bolter is gonna fire into this. And that's about it. 
All right, here we go into Imperial Fist turn two shooting. All right, so at the end of the Imperial Fist uh, turn two, this tank got finally destroyed thanks to him getting another six mortal wounds on this thing with the Hellfire round. Finally, leaving it on one wound, which this guy finally just went, uh, last cannon, boom. All the rest of the shots on that thing was wasted. These guys killed three. Plasma pistol. Let's see what that does. Overcharging. Minus one to hit. Still hits. Wounding. On a five. They got it. All right, so three plus save. It should really be a two. Minus three, so six up. Save. Look at that. All right, so not even a plasma pistol going into the tracks will do anything to stop a Bane Blade. Love it. All right, so that's that for shooting. Um, that one went down thanks to the missile launcher up there doing wonders for all of us. He's the hero we didn't know we needed. We need more missile launchers instead of Primaris Marines. The cowards ran back into cover, stalking away while the rest of the standard Marines stand here and fight. No wonder they're always used as cannon fodder. They're not real Marines. They're just flesh. They're meat shields. Anyways, we're gonna charge into these two because why not? And then they're gonna, he's gonna charge into this, so this thing's gonna spend a command point for Overwatch. They're not, so I'm just gonna, yeah, they're in. We. I'm gonna set up their attacks already, so Sergeant, other guy. Him. And he's in. Three attacks, because he's a veteran. Well, let me double check that because I'm not really good at memorizing stuff like this, which is a problem. So, two attacks, but plus one for being a space marine. That does not sound right, but it is. I don't like that. All right, so, Pearl Guard down to three command points left. Gonna do Overwatch now. I'll come back after that because that is a lot of dice. All right, so at the end of the fight phase, it went as great as you expected. Um, veteran died immediately after one round of shooting from the heavy bolters. No surprise there. Um, they failed to kill that one last guy. So he's stuck there now. Oh boy. Um, yeah. So we're gonna go into Imperial Guard turn two. So they go up to four command points. Well, the smoke on this one is going away now because you can only pop smoke once. After that, you're done. So I'm gonna do this to let myself remember that I did smoke on this guy already. I'm gonna put a little piece of cotton right there on top of the smoke so make it seem like they just popped. Make it easier for myself to remember because I'm a very forgetful person. There we go, see, look beautiful, this piece. All right, well, he's the only one that's gonna be able to heal two D3. Three, four, five, up to five, so. No overheal, sadly. So 26 wounds. Now we're gonna do a quick movement phase. 
So I'm going to say this thing got pushed to the side like that. Warlord is going to go here. This one's going to stay put. Strike and Shroud is no longer going to be effective right there. We are going to do Gunner's Kill on sight. On him. And this thing is going to pivot. Like so. This guy is gonna move all the way up into there. Like so. And this guy's gonna get out of combat and go this way. All right, well, here we go. Shooting phase. All right, so at the end of the next turn for Death Corpse of Krieg shooting. That's gone. He only has four wounds remaining. That thing is destroyed. He's scared. They're still remaining. They took a whole bunch of fire, but nothing happened. These two worked together to take that thing out. And this thing wasted a lot of shots. Because that thing only went down after the demolisher cannon demolished it. I can see why it's called a demolisher cannon. <laughs> and then the health, the hot shot las guns, which fired, did nothing, but the plasma gun overcharged and killed one on instant. Now we're gonna go into the combat phase. Now we're gonna go into the next phase for Imperial Fist, turn three. Be right back after the movement phase is done. All right, so everyone moved. They got out of the building again and advanced. I'm gonna spend two, three command points for bolter drill on them so they can fire into this thing. Try and take it out, along with bolter from there, bolter fire from there, sniper fire from there, and a rocket launcher from there as well, all going into this one target, including a character that's gonna try and charge in the combat if I can. They're gonna kill them. I'm gonna spend a command point over here for Hellfire round again. That's a lot of Hellfire rounds. I wonder who's the captain. He's gonna go into this thing by himself with the chain sword. I should have given him a hammer, fist, something. I don't know. The hammer would have been nice. Maybe I'll make another captain. Yeah. Anyways, this guy's still alive. How remarkable. Anyway, I'll see you at the end of the shooting phase to see if anything actually happened. Wow. That was pathetic. This guy did two damage. Rocket launcher would have done a flat. Let's see what would have happened if I was able to wound. Five damage if I could. But no. Rolled a six for a save versus the missile. All those fired, one finally managed to do a mortal wound on it and um, saved the standard rule. They all fired, did one wound. They all fired, nothing. You went the increased AP of being in tactical doctrine. <sighs> all right, charging time. Gonna charge here, gonna charge there. Strangely enough, I'm actually just going to do Overwatch on this one. Not this one. Because that's my Warlord. On this side. The table anyways. So he, since he's only within two inches, mix it in. He, on the other hand, makes it in as well, yeah. In he goes. Last command point for Imperial Guard. Here we go. Literally the last command point for Overwatch. Battle Cannon. Wrong base. Four shots. Not good. Hitting on sixes. Rerolling ones. Nothing. Heavy Bolters. Hitting on sixes. Rerolling ones. 
Only one hit so far. Wounding. On uh, three. No. Last cannon. Reroll ones. Okay. I'll be right back after the fight phase is done. Maybe I should have done the overwatch on him. Oh well. All right, so at the end of the fight phase, this thing got knocked down a couple wounds. Sa didn't save four out of most of the attacks that the captain did. So, there you go. He whacked them, nothing happened. Whacked back, nothing happened after that. The tech priest that was right here heroically intervened, because he's a character, and smacked the captain doing nothing. A fight happened over here, killing the last guy. Moved over. Now they're on their path to this thing. And these are the only four units left for the Imperial God. So, there's still a chance for the Imperial Fist to win this fight. We shall see. We're going to the next turn. Imperial God. I think it's turn three. See you at the end of the movement phase. All right, so at the end of the movement phase, healed up two wounds thanks to the 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 ruse or the special twist of the game. Healed up one extra wound thanks to the tech priest who left combat. And um, well, since it's a giant behemoth, the only thing I can't fire is that gun and that gun, so all the rest are gonna go into him. Yay. Those bolters are gonna go into him, including the last cannon, so that's that. All this is gonna go there. All right, see so you at the end of the shooting phase. All right, so at the end of the shooting phase, the captain was slaughtered thanks to all the heavy bolters. Actually, I just did the last cannons alone and just melted him. Last cannon melted that boy. Plasma melted most of them. The only one that's left is him because the bolter smashed into the other guy. So, lost three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So on a five or a six, he flees. He's gone. All right, so all that's left are our missile launcher, the hero of the Imperium on this game, our medic, those three, that squad, and them. We're going to go into Imperial Fist, turn four. See you at the end of the movement phase, if there will be any. All right, so at the end of the movement phase, those guys move forward. This thing came around the corner, went there, stayed put, stayed put, and they're all just basically staying put because everything that's gonna be shot at is here, the last one, two, three, four, five. Five units. This thing needs to be healed up like a whole bunch of wounds, which is not gonna be a problem considering it's at 13 wounds. So that's something. Most of the shots are gonna be going into, well, the Warlord, because he's doubled the amount of points that most of everything else is worth. Just making it right. Because they can knock him down with all the bolter fire going into him. We're going to go into the final doctrine for these guys, because it's assault bolters, which allows them to get AP negative one, and pistols also get AP negative one as well. So that's sweet. What isn't sweet is that all the rapid fire stuff is not going to get it, so I'm going to spend. Well, never mind. Um, let's just fire all everything into this to see if we can take it down. Be right back at the end of the shooting phase. All right, so at the end of the shooting phase for the Imperial Fist, a lot of the bolter fire only weakened it. The rocket launcher, being the hero as usual, did a flat six wounds on the thing after spending command points to reroll. Finally killing the thing, giving him three confirmed kills in this area. One exploding and the, the rest of them being these two. And another confirmed hit being this thing. So I'm going to give that guy a few battle honors or something. No combat phase because no one's within range to do so. And well... We're gonna go to Imperial Guard, turn four. 
Update. He had one extra wound that I didn't know of, that I didn't remember because of the relic. The relic that allows everyone within six inches hit reroll hit rolls of one also gives him an extra wound. So he only had one wound above what I thought he had, so still in one wound. Now we go to their turn. All right, so at the end of the movement phase, this one moved to the side here, stayed there, fix this thing up, another D3, so it just healed it twice. Jerry rigged that one. And so that's that for movement. And the fire there, fire there. A lot of shots, heavy bolters there. Last cannon's going there. Uh, Demolisher probably gonna go into him. Last cannon's going into them. And cannon going into them as well because to finally take them out. Cannon up there. Bolters there. Bolters there. That going up there. And last cannon going there. All right. Be right back at the end of the shooting phase. All right, that's that for the shooting phase. Hardly much happened here, nothing much happened there, nothing much happened there. A few scouts were killed up there. Because this thing is wounded, that's wounded, and this thing is the only thing that's at full health, and the only other unit that can fire. It's right there, only has a pistol. Can't really do much. So. We're gonna go to the next phase for Imperial Fist. Turn five, last turn for them. All right, so at the end of the, the shooting phase, that thing is finally brought down thanks to him shooting down at it, spending command point for a hellfire round because he's a character. Boom. Caused two mortal wounds. Down. He's in the last two left. All right, we're going to have these guys charge into this, which is... Three inches. So what we're gonna do is charge. Cause there's no more command points to use. Well, there is, but I don't want to use it for that. So see at the end of the round of the, the combat phase. End of combat phase. Nothing happened. Going to movement phase for Imperial Guard. Last turn. Turn five. I think they might win because this thing is still alive and might be able to wipe out all of that. Maybe. We'll see. See at the end of the round of the movement phase because basically it's going to do this. And that. And that's that. Healing. D3 for the turn. D3 for the tech priest. So three, four, five. Up to five wounds, so up to 20. Back up to full health. Hitting on fours now. All right, so at the end of the shooting phase, that got destroyed. They're still intact. They lost one more guy. Missile launcher still alive. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little dude. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna count up all the casualties for both sides and count up to see who has the most points and they're gonna win. I have a feeling it's gonna be the this side, out of all of them. Yeah, we'll see. So at the end of the game, the Imperial Fists were only able to kill 36 power, which is three tanks, one being the Warlord and a heavy weapons team, and a Scion squad. While the Death Corps of Krieg were able to take out two Predators, a Vindicator, a Rhino, Drop Pod, Veteran Squad, Tactical Marine Squad, Bike Squad, Tech Priest, and the Enemy Warlord. The Death Corps of Krieg were able to make kill 46 power combined, making them the victors of this game. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and maybe learned something about whatever. I don't know. This was just for fun. Like all games should be. My oh my, what a wonderful game that was. I hope you enjoyed it, had fun, and, well, just enjoyed the time watching, listening to, well, me talk about random stuff while playing a game. The reason why I'm still having you here is because I'm working on another game. Another one that involves a red team and a blue team, but it's still a tabletop game. 
it's in the process of being still put together, but it's my own custom fan game of Team Fortress 2. On screen, showing for a little bit with models. I'll be doing another video later on this week, next week, whenever it's finished, of showing the team and how to play the game, basically. How to set up the table and all that will be in other videos later on if people want to see more of this game. Anyway, thank you for watching, enjoying the show, whatever, you know, just basic YouTube stuff. Hope you have a good day. And again, thank you for watching. Till next time. Bye-bye.